Welcome everyone to our tutorial example number 9. This time we're going to talk about the torsional lateral buckling of a simple beam. Actually, the credit of this solving uh, problem will not go to me, it will go to another someone I was searching on online and uh, find a, a solved example about the torsional lateral buckling of a simple beam with all the steps and it was done by someone in uh, Alberg University which is a Danish university so I said it will okay if I will explain that in a video and the credit should go to the person who prepared that document uh, from Alborg University. So uh, I will put uh, the link for that document in the description box of this uh, YouTube um, video. So if you would like, you can print it out and you can follow the steps step by step uh, and you can do it by yourself. So let's start. Uh, we will have a beam, a very thin beam made of steel with applied uh, concentrated moment on both ends. And let's see if we can find uh, the required moment to do uh, to have the buckling in that beam. So let's start with part as usual. Uh, we will rename it to this part to be the beam and we will leave it to a three dimensional deformable and solid shape uh, with an approximate size of 0.4. Continue. Then we will draw it. Our beam will start by 0, 0 and 8 by 0 0.08 our dimensions will be in, in meter this time so this will be 0 0.08 meter and 0 0.32 meter and in order to see it all we have to hit this one so this is the approximate shape of our beam hit x and done then the depth of our beam will be 8 meters and say ok so this is the general shape we need to a little bit affix it because our beam is an i-shaped beam so we need to take this face off and from the other side yeah like the movie the famous movie face off um we need to take them off leaving the web in the middle and let's see how to do that first of all we will choose this we will choose create partition and so then we have to define the cutting plane and I will choose normal to edge so if I take this face for example and choose this um, this edge and I need it to be normal on this point say create partition and then we have this partition this partition will be actually our web so you can see that all the beam was partitioned in the longitudinal direction now, uh, since it will be a very thin beam, so maybe we can use um, shell elements to analyze it instead of a hexagonal element. And in this way, we will change our beam to be uh, by hitting this um, icon. So we will create a shell from a solid. How can we do that? You can see this small triangle here hit it actually the actual icon that you will see is this one which is a create a shell if you go to the end you will find the create a shell from solid so we will choose that then we have been asked that to select the souls to be removed so we have to select all the beam and say done now this not no no more a three dimensional it's a shell um, then we need as we said so hit done, done again we need to take this face off from this side and from the other side. So I will go to this icon, remove faces, choose it, and I have to select a face to be removed. So I will take this face, hit Control Alt, and use your um, right click in your mouse, hit Shift to choose the other face, and say Done. So this is our beam. This is the geometry of our beam. Now we finished everything about that geometry, except we didn't define the thickness of our shell. You can see it here. So this is our eye section. This is top flange, bottom flange, and this is our web. And we have a plate at the end. Okay. So let's go to property to define the properties. And the material, our material will be steel. 
the mechanical properties it will be elastic Young modulus will be 2.1 e to the power 11 Poisson's ratio 0.3 again I'm taking these numbers from the document that I told you about so I will stick to it now I have to define the section to create it so our steel section will be shell and homogeneous continue now we need to define the shell thickness so for this example the thick the thickness of that shell will be 8 millimeters or 0 0.008 uh, meter as you can see by default material is material steel that we defined hit ok then we have to assign this section to our beam and hit done by default the section is section steel which is very good the material is a steel we are very fine here just hit ok and now we can go to assembly and assemble our beam just hit ok leave everything as it is to define the step the step which will be this time is instability we need to change the procedure type from general to linear perturbation and choose buckle say ok now we can change the eigen solver to be blank zos instead of sub, uh, subspace and to define the number of icon values required let's say that we need six to see six of them and say okay now it's the time to define the load and the boundary conditions and i will start with boundary conditions since it's easier so in boundary conditions this beam will be like simply supported beam from this end and from this end so we don't want it to move it will be for example it will be like um, a roller here so it will be supported in y direction it will be a hinge here so it will support it in y direction and it will not move in x direction as well and to assure that we will not have like free body motion we will uh, fix this line the center line of this face and this face in x direction so we will not have the hold the beam moving in an x direction and we will not have any convergence of this problem so let's start doing that first of all i will take all the conditions and i will fix some elements in x direction so leave it as mechanical step should be uh, from initial yeah so because it's from beginning so we'll choose step initial and we will choose displacement and rotation hit continue go to the first face pick the center line and go to the other face hold shift and choose the other center line and hit done and restrict it in x direction okay that's good now let's restrict the other um, elements in y direction so this will be fix in y give the displacement and rotation continue and we need to restrict the bottom edges of both ends again hit your shift and choose select each part then say done and restrict it in y direction still we need one of our um, ends let's say this end to be fixed in uh, z direction so it will not move in this direction so again go to this face this will be fixed in z direction continue choose these two edges hit done and restrict it in z direction it's very simple now if we want to apply our moment our moment will be like a couple working on this node and this node so how to do that it's very easy go to create load this will be instead of load one i will call it moment one and it will be applied not in initial step but in instability step and its type will be moment continue hit this one this node and the bottom node here and say done 
and the rotation will be around the x-axis so I will call it CM1 CM1 will be minus 0.5 why minus 0.5? Because we have two po uh, two points here, so in total we have one one unit moment. Okay. Now we need to go to other phase and repeat the process. That will be our moment number two. And moment number two will apply for same points from the other face with same value but with a different direction in opposite direction so it will be over a 0.5 okay now you can see these two moment signs these two arrows from this side and other arrows from the other side this could be a little bit you cannot see it very quietly now but here it is we can see it here okay as we finished our load, all what we need to mesh our element and then to do our job. So let's mesh it. So I will change the object from assembly to part um, and go to mesh controllers. Select your beam, hit done, and change the element shape to be quad and the technique that we use to be structured. Hit OK. Then go to mesh again and choose element type. Again, select your beam, hit done, and the geometric order I will choose quadratic, the family I will keep that shell. We can see that the degrees of freedom per node will be 6 degrees of freedom, which is very good. Hit OK. Now we're gonna see that. So see the part. I, in the approximate global size, instead of 0.4, I will choose 0.32. Apply it okay so we are good now to mesh apart yes and this is our nice mesh now we need to define our job okay so we'll create our job we'll call it instability as well hit continue leave everything as it is hit okay and submit it okay and let's monitor it. I don't think it will take a long time. It will take only a few seconds. So be patient with me. This will be your data file. So if you are looking for all the details of what's going on on this, uh, this problem, you can find it here you can find for example the number of elements it's 129 elements and the number of nodes is 440 you can find all the your statistics here and also you can find that for mode number one the eigenvalue is 15,663 for the second uh, eigenvalue it will be minus 18,000 681 and so on so here are your eigenvalues okay i will take this out away and i need to go to results to see the deformed shape so this will be my deformed shape and if i want to see the contour lines and formations on it so i will choose this icon now you can see that u magnitude here uh, so this is our deformed shape with the eigenvalue which is 15,663 uh, this actually uh, the u1 value so you can see that the maximum um, u1 value is 1 the minimum should be 0 let's go to magnitude again yeah from 0 to almost 1 which is good so what is uh, the output of, of this uh, a tutorial example actually now we know what is the eigenvalue different eigenvalues for this beam so this is the first deformable shape for the first eigenvalue if we want to go and see the second one this is will be the second eigenvalue and you can see how it will be twisted here and with the new value of um, 18,681 it's minus because the, the direction of the deflection and the load 
different here in the second one and this will be the third eigenvalue this is the fourth fifth and this is the, second, the sixth one so that's that um, thank you for your following me have a good time